We may also ask you to uh, be a clover. So if one raise your hands up in the air. Oh, there you go. Oh my god, I can't. We may also ask you to be a one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. So give me a fish. Mom, 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 mom. Uh, give me your best dead fish. Dead fish. Love it. <laughs> That's funny, some of them was pretty sane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. also do some call and response like we did previously. So maybe if I ask you to say, uh, give me your best silly little laugh. Like, <laughs> 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 maybe a sound like, yuck, 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 yuck. Maybe also running up and down the aisles. Better, 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 better. Yeah, no, keep both arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Sounds good? Yeah, oh, sounds good? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I guess okay? Because we're on larger than life characters here, so we'll need all the space. Yeah, no, don't go there. You're going to block someone else. Now, I believe we are almost ready to go and say goodbye to our sister friends. Yeah, no, just try to see who's director Stefan is almost here. All right, friends, we want to say goodbye to our, our Seuss friends because um, they got things to do, places to see, all, all sorts of stuff. It's their birthday, they have to party. They have to party and get ready. So first, let's say goodbye to thing one and thing two. Everyone raise a hand up. Say bye, thing one, thing two. Bye, bye, thing, bye one, thing one, thing two. two. Yeah. Say happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right, and up next, uh, Sam Williams got to make tons of food, too. Right? Chefing to, to do, he's, he's a Michelin star chef, after all. So everyone raise a hand in the air. And say bye, Sam. I am. Bye, bye Sam. I am. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, we're gonna say. That's it. Everyone raise a hand in the air and say bye, cat in the hat. No, 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 no. I'm gonna look at all the cookies. Meow, meow, meow. Oh, there you are. But everyone, keep the hand in the air. Keep the hand in the air because you know what? We gotta say hello to the one and only Bruce Director Stefan. Everyone say hi, Stefan. Can I get a chow chow? Chow chow. How's the parade? Good? Good. Yeah. Were you loud and proud? Yeah. Listen, wow. I was just running all the way from the Lido deck and I could hear you. It was like, Dr. Seuss is on the loose. <laughs> now, can anyone tell me what story time are we going to be reading today? Mm, story huh? time. Can't they have not that one? The Grinch, a bit too early for that one. Give it a few months. Dr. Seuss, yes, that is correct. Sam, I am here. Yell it, Kyle. I like that one, but not that one. Horton hears a who. That is correct. Horton hears a who. And let's bring the book right now. Here we go. Wow, look at that beautiful book. Everybody say, Everybody say, ah. Let's try it all together. Here we go. We are here. We are here. We are here. We are here. Ooh, that was good. I like that already. I like that already. Hmm. In the story, we have one small but mighty character named Jojo. Now, can you do me a favor? Can you shout it out loud? The word ya for me. Here we go. Let me hear ya. Perfect. Wow. I'm impressed. Okay, so we know the 
that. Hmm. But we cannot start our story time without our characters and sound effects. First up first, we have the Mayor of Cool. Now, my junior cruisers, can you stand on up for me and take a big bow like this? Yeah, my yeah. true Mayor of Cool. <gasps> Fancy. And let's bring the Mayor of Hoover! Good. All right, Mayor, take a bow once again. Let me hear. <gasps> that was cool. Was that good? Yeah. yeah. He got a roll. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. So we have the Mayor of Hoover. Hmm. Next up, we have the Sour Kangaroos. They never smile. They're always moody. I don't know why. So can you show me how the kangaroos jump? Huh? Jump. Okay, but you need to have that moody face. Let me see that moody face. More moody. More moody. Like you need a sour patch from the cherry on top. I'm... Okay, that's good, that's good. Let's bring the sour kangaroo! Look at that! Can you smile? Oh. oh my god. All right. Maybe maybe they're gonna smile by the end of the story. Who knows? All right. We have the sour kangaroos. Mm. Can anyone show me how does an eagle fly? Fly. Okay. The, how, how does an eagle sound? Horton was laughing. 
enjoy the jungle's grey jones when Hortum the elephant heard a small noise. So Hortum stopped splashing and looked toward the sound. That's funny, thought Hortum. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person were calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton. But who are you? Man. Horton looked and looked, but I could see nothing there. But a small speck of dust while it passed through the air. I say, murmured Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to go. So you know what I think? Why I think that there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust. Some sort of a creature of very small size. Too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. Some poor little person who is shaking with fear that they'll blow in the pool they have no way to steer. I'll just have to save them because after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched a great trunk through the air and lifted a dust stick and carried over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Humph! Humph a voice. It was the sour kangaroo and the young kangaroo in the pouch said, Humph! Do! My next pet is as small as the head of a pen. A person on that? Why, there never has been. Believe me, said Horton, I tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen and I heard it quite clearly. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in the pouch said, Me too. You're the biggest lame fool in the jungle of Noob. And the kangaroo plunged in the hood of the pool. What terrible splashes, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I got to protect them, I'm bigger than they. So Horton plucked up the clover and hustled away. Should I put this speck down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I can't put it down and I won't. After all, a person's a person. Then Horton stopped walking, the speck voice to stalking. The voice was so faint, one could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, said Horton, and put an ear near it. <clears throat> My friend, came the voice. You are a very fine friend. You help all us folks on this dust speak no end. You saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. You saved all our churches and grocery stores. Oh, you mean Horton Gas. You have buildings there too. My tongue is still hoodle, for I am a hood. And you are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town. You safe now. Don't worry, I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, the animal crew climbed up Horton's neck. <laughs> the animals came shouting, What rot? This elephant's talking to who's who are not. They snatched Horton's claw. They carried off to a black bottom eagle named Mulad Mulatica. And before the poor elephant even could speak, that eagle flew off with a flower in its beak. All that late afternoon and far into the night, that black hot bird flapped its wings in fast flight. While Porto chased after, with thrones over stones, that tattered one's toenails and battered one's bones, and begged, please, don't harm all my little folks who have as much right to live as us bigger folks do. 
but far, far beyond the eagle cap flapping, and over each shoulder called back, quit your tapping. I'll fly the night through, I'm a bird, and I don't mind it, and I'll hide this tomorrow, or you'll never find it. And at 6.56, the next morning it did it. It sure was a terrible place that it hit it. It let that small clover drop somewhere inside of a great batch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, said the bird, but I think you will fail. And it left with a flip of its flat bottom tail. Ha, 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 ha. I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on my small speck of dust. And clover by clover by clover with care, Horton picked up and searched them and called, Are you there? Then on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till they were found at last on the three million lava. My friends, cried the elephant, tell me, do tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? From down on the speck came the voice of the man. We really had trouble, much more than a shiver. So, Horton, please, cried the voice of the mayors. Will you speak by us? Who's only making repairs? Of course, Horton answered. Of course, I will stick. I'll stick by you, small folks, through thin and through thick. Hump a voice. For almost two days, you ran wild and insisted on chatting with persons who had never existed. And I'm here to stay, snapped the big kangaroo. Then your silly nonsensical game is all through. And the young kangaroo in the pouch said, Me too! With the help of this animal crew, and animal tigers, leopards, rhinos, and chickens too, whose help I be caged. You're going to be roped, and you're going to be caged. Mayo! Mayo! Hello, Mayo! You got to prove now that you really are there. And the people cried loudly. They cried out in fear. Okay, audience, are you ready for a chair? Here we go. We are here. We are here. We are here. We are here. Beautiful. The elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? That was clear as a bell. You kangaroos surely heard it very well. I heard no small voices, and you didn't need them. And the young kangaroo in the boat said, Me neither. Let's go, they shouted, and cage the big boat. Wrap Horton up with ten miles of rope. Horton fought back as they started to hold Horton into a cage, but managed to call to the mayor, Don't give up. I believe in you all. Because after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. The mayor grabbed a tum tum and started to smack it. And all over Hubble, they hooked up a racket. They rattled tin kettles, they beat on brass pans, on garbage pail tops, and all cranberry tin cans. And Horton called back. I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't as strong quite as mine. Are you sure every who down in hole is working? Quick, look through your town, is there anyone shirking? Through the town rushed the mayor, from the east to the west, then back to east, then back to west, then southwest, then he got lost. But everyone seemed to be doing their best. And just when it felt it was getting over and almost about to give up in despair, the mayor suddenly burst through a door. And that mayor discovered one shirker quite hidden away in the Fairfax Apartments apartment Velchi. A very small, very small shirker named Jojo was standing, just standing and bouncing a yo-yo. Not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed inside and grabbed the young turf and climbed with the light up the Eiffel the top. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour, so open your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. When they finally got to the top, the lad looked around 
and shout it out! Yeah. And shout it out! Yeah. Ooh, that was good. I like that. That one, and that yacht, that one small extra yacht, put it over. Finally and last, from that speck on that clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean, and the elephants smiled. Do you see what I mean? They proved they are persons, no matter how small, and their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. Mm, how true? Yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do? From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in the pouch said, Me too. From sun in the summer, from rain when it's polished, I'm going to protect them no matter how small they are. Yes, give an applause going for sour kangaroos right over here. We have the chicken from the animal kingdom. Yeah. Make some noise for Horton! Yeah. We have Lad Monica! Yeah. And the mayo on the wheel. Yeah. Now, shall we find Cat in the head back again? Mm -hmm. To ask the cat if he liked the story. Cat, are you sleeping again? Cat? Mm -hmm. Cat? <gasps> Where's cat? It's... Okay, let's wake up the cat once again. On a count of three, we're gonna say, wake up cat. Here we go. One, two, three. Wake up cat. Hmm. How true? Where's the cat? Kitty, 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 kitty. Where's the cat? I think cat just left. It just left us. But you know what? That's okay. I think Kat will be, be with us very, very shortly. But can anyone tell me, what did you learn from the story today, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Treat people nicely, all right? That's beautiful. Oh, yeah, treat people nicely. I love that. That was beautiful. What about you? Oh, a person is a person, no matter how small. Yes, what about you? Everybody's important! Yay! Everyone is important, yes! What's your answer right over here, huh? That we have to be nice to each other, right? We have to treat each other equally. Yeah. What did we learn at the back? I see you again. They found somebody for, who was screaming for help and they helped them, right? Oh, that's great. I like those answers. Yes, in the back. Be kind. Be kind. Love that. Right over here. Why did I do that to me? Don't be rude. Oh, that's, that's important. Like that. Mm. Just, yes, what's your answer? She's like, Mom. Hmm? Yup. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> that was beautiful. But once again, thank you so, so much for joining for Dr. Zeus's story time and parade. Coming up next very shortly, we're going to have those bingo sales. We're going to have the $5,000 jackpot bingo. And we're going to have some time play trivia to keep you entertained, okay? But once again, have a great afternoon. And we're going to see you soon. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, Great job today. Ciao. Bum, bum, bam, I'm loving it. <laughs>